Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So in this video, I want to show you guys how to model a system or a situation with first order differential equations. So first, let's go over a quick recap of what we've learned so far. And so far, we've just been dealing with first order linear differential equations of this form right here. Y prime plus A of X, Y is equal to B of X. And we've talked about two different cases for this particular form. And that was the case whenever we had a separable differential equation of this form, which means that we could separate the variables of this equation into a function of x times dx and set that equal to a function of y times dy. And then we were able to straight up integrate both sides from there in order to actually solve the differential equation. And we talked about two different cases when we had constant coefficients and non-constant coefficients. But for both situations, we can still use this general idea right here of straight up integration because our differential equation is separable. Now the other case where we had a non-separable differential equation of this form, we decided that we had to use something called an integrating factor, which we defined as mu. So now in this video, what I want to show you guys is an example on how we can use what we've learned so far right here in order to simulate the behavior of a system using these first order differential equations. So we're going to take a look at this example right here, and we're going to model this with differential equations. So we have a tank that is initially filled with 100 gallons of fresh water. Then I start filling up the tank with salt water at a rate of three gallons per minute. And this salt water has a concentration of one ounce of salt per gallon. So here I am right here. I'm this guy. And I have this hose that's hooked up to a salt water source, and I am dumping in salt water that has a concentration of one ounce of salt per gallon and I'm dumping this into our tank at a rate of three gallons per minute and at the same time we have this valve right here that opens up and it starts releasing the contents of our tank at a rate of two gallons per minute and the fluid that flows out is simply a mixture of the fresh water and salt water and we're going to assume that the fluid that flows out is homogeneous meaning that the salt is evenly distributed uh, throughout the fresh water as it comes in. So what we want to do is we want to find the amount of salt in ounces as a function of time. So at any time t, I want to be able to determine how much salt exists within our tank. So let's denote the amount of salt in our tank as s. So s is the amount of salt in our tank. And now let's also define some other things that we have learned from reading this paragraph up here. And we know that the initial volume at time equals zero is equal to 100 gallons. And we also know that the salt concentration at time equals zero is zero. So right here, we're just saying that the amount of salt that exists within our tank at the very beginning is equal to zero because it's full of fresh water. So whenever we model something with differential equations, the way that we write our equations is by taking the variable that we are interested in, which in this case is the amount of salt, and then we write an expression for the rate of change of that variable. So basically, we just write an expression for S prime, or the rate of change of our salt. And we know that the rate of change of salt is just equal to the rate of salt coming in minus the rate of salt coming out. So now we just need to fill in for these expressions right here. And we can say that the rate of salt coming in or out is just equal to the flow rate times the concentration of that salt. And this makes sense because a flow rate gives us gallons per minute. And when we multiply by concentration, what we get is ounces per gallon, which gives us ounces per minute or the amount of salt coming in per minute which is the rate of salt. So I'm going to rewrite this expression right here for S prime. I'm going to rewrite it as S prime is equal to the amount of salt coming in which is just equal to three gallons per minute because it's flowing in at three gallons per minute times the concentration which is one ounce of salt per gallon so times one and then minus the rate of salt coming out. So we have a rate of two gallons per minute, and now we have to multiply this by the concentration. So the concentration can be defined as 
the amount of salt that exists within our tank divided by the total volume of salt water mixture that we have in our tank at that time. So since we don't necessarily know how much salt is in our tank, we're gonna leave that in terms of S. So we have S divided by the total volume, but we also know that our volume is going to be changing as a function of time because we have three gallons coming in and we only have two gallons coming out. And that means that every minute we are increasing our capacity by one gallon. So if we start at 100 gallons, every minute we're just adding one gallon. So our volume can be represented by 100 gallons plus T, where T represents the number of minutes that have passed. So the overall concentration of salt given any time T can be represented as the amount of salt S that exists within our tank at that time divided by the volume at that time which is how I got this expression right here for the rate of salt that's flowing out. So this is our differential equation that we are going to use to model our system. And now all we have to do is solve this differential equation and what we are left with is a solution that tells us how much salt is in our tank at any time t. Okay, so here's our differential equation that we're gonna to use to model the system. And I'm gonna rewrite this as s prime is equal to three minus two s divided by 100 plus t. So now let's just solve this equation right here. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to put this in standard form. So I'm going to rewrite this again as s prime plus 2 divided by 100 plus t times s is equal to 3. And since we have a non-separable differential equation right here, we know how to solve that. We just need to find an integrating factor for this. And we can do that by just considering the function that's in front of our s. And we'll, let's just take the exponential to the integral of that function, which is two over 100 plus t dt. And this comes out to be e to the two times natural log of 100 plus t. And we can move this two up to the power right here by properties of exponentials. And now we can cancel out the e to the natural log. So what we end up with is a mu, which is equal to 100 plus t quantity squared. So now let's go ahead and multiply our whole entire differential equation through by mu. So what we get is 100 plus t squared s prime plus 2 times 100 plus t s is equal to 3 times 100 plus t squared. And now we can integrate both sides with respect to t. And we know exactly how to integrate this left-hand side. Um, it just comes out to our integrating factor, which is 100 plus t squared times our function s. And now we can integrate the right-hand side, which comes out to be 100 plus t cubed plus c, our constant of integration. So all I have to do now is divide both sides by 100 plus t squared. So what I get is s is equal to 100 plus t plus c divided by 100 plus t squared. So this represents the general solution to our differential equation, but recall that we had an initial condition, and that was that the amount of salt at time equals zero was equal to zero since it was all fresh water. So let's go ahead and apply this initial condition, and when we do that, all we have to do is plug in zero, and when we do that, we get 100 plus c divided by 100 squared, and since this has to equal zero, we just set this equal to zero, and now we can solve for c. So c comes out to be negative 100 times 100 squared, which we will write as negative 100 cubed. So c is equal to negative 100 cubed, and now all we have to do is come back to our general form right here and plug in that for c. So our final solution is s, the amount of salt as a function of t, is equal to 100 plus t minus 100 cubed divided by 100 plus t squared. So this function right here represents the amount of salt that exists within our tank in ounces as a function of time. So I can plug in any value for t and what I will get is the amount of salt that is in that tank at that time. 
so you guys can kind of have an idea of how powerful differential equations are. They allow us to recognize the behavior of a system by just considering an equation that relates the rate of change of the variables that we're interested in. So in terms of design, this is extremely important because if we can understand how a system operates, then that allows us as engineers to make design changes.